When we think of animals that migrate, snakes don't typically come to mind. Mammals, birds, fish, insects, really any other group takes the spotlight. But snakes, more so than any of these animals, have a much harder time riding out the dip in temperature that comes with the change in seasons. Naturally, they've developed ways of coping, and nowhere is that more apparent than in Southern Illinois' Shawnee National Forest. In autumn, snakes leave La Rue Swamp, where they eat and breed, cross La Rue Road, and head into the adjacent limestone cliffs. It's here that they wait out the harsh winter weather and begin brumating, a process not too different from hibernation. Once temperatures climb back up in the spring, they cross the road again and make their way back into the swamp. To facilitate this, the Forest Service closes down the road to vehicular traffic for two months, twice a year. So come the snakes and the snake enthusiasts. With 23 different species here, there is a lot to see. You can find tons of herping videos online where people show what kinds of snakes they find. What I want to know is why. Why here? Why doesn't this happen, say, literally anywhere else? Snakes in many parts of the U.S. need to be able to withstand cold winter temperatures. They can't do that without a good overwintering spot, or hibernaculum as it's known. Roads fragment habitats everywhere, so it's not like you can't find info on other parts of the country that get snakes crossing roads during spring and fall. What is harder to find is any location that has a population of snakes quite this large or this diverse. So something obviously makes Southern Illinois tick. To find out what that is, we need to go back 570 million years. At that point in time, Illinois was still covered by a large inland sea. Its waters were full of ocean life and, as is the case today as it was then, many ocean animals had shells that would stick around long after their death. With time, those shells were converted into the limestone bluffs that these snakes overwinter in. Later on, during the Pleistocene Epoch, glaciers began to move across and flatten much of the state. They stopped just a few miles short of La Rue Road. Anyways, while all of this was happening, while inland oceans were receding, limestone bluffs forming, and glaciers leveling, southern Illinois was constantly going through other major geological changes. Changes whose causes become pretty apparent when we see the fault lines that crisscross much of the south, but are absent up north. Over the course of millions of years, these fault lines caused much of that landscape to continuously shift. This, along with glaciation, is the reason for the North's uniformity and the South's diversity. It's why we don't see giant cliffs next to swamps anywhere else in the state. In fact, most of the habitat variety is concentrated in the southern portion of the state. Not only do you have forests and swamps, but caves, seeps, springs, barrens, glades, and on and on and on. This is a pretty unique situation as far as the Midwest goes. That diversity in habitat leads to an incredible diversity in plant and animal life as well. This is especially true for the area in and around La Rue Road. Robert H. Mullenbrock, botanist and authority on the plants of Illinois, has himself stated, 93% of the extraneous plants have affinities to the south or southeast. Thus, the floristic makeup of the Union County Swamp Area has a distinct southeastern United States character. Other tree species uh, that occur here that I see in the south are cherry, cherry bark oak. So it, it's really interesting to see all these southern components way up here uh, in the kind of in the middle of the United States, uh, their northern extent. That's Mark Vukovic, resident wildlife biologist of Shawnee National Forest. And indeed, the forest sits along the northern edge of the Cherry Bark Oaks Range, but this forest marks the boundary for a lot of the animals that live here too, not just the plants. We can see this exact trend with many of the mammals. So many of their ranges just barely graze southern Illinois. Same story with a good portion of the fish here too. And yes, even the snakes. Of the 23 species that cross the road biannually, for about five of them, this location is part of the outer limit of their range. What's interesting, though, is that when we take a closer look at the borders and distributions for all herptofaunal life in Illinois, we see that they plainly line up with the distribution of the vegetation. In fact, lots of correlations like these pop up when we start doing side-by-side -side comparisons with maps of Illinois' physiography, glacial geology, and soil composition. Which makes sense. 
Fault lines created a lot of geological disruption down south, while glaciers made sure everything was smoothed out up north. Glaciation was also responsible for transporting different soils across different parts of the state. This geological environment set the stage for a diverse set of habitats and consequently a diverse set of plants and animals as well, ones from all over the country. Um, you can get western meadowlarks here and eastern meadowlarks here in southern Illinois. Um, just like western ribbon snakes occur here. It's one of the reasons why I took this job is because I knew this area had all four of, of these things happening in one area. North meets south meets east meets west. So it, it's, it's truly a, a remarkable place. Sitting at the intersections between ranges for so many distinct flora and fauna almost makes Shawnee National Forest a kind of nexus at the center of the country a halfway point for all these regional species scattered around the U.S. So is that why this is the only road closure in the U.S. due to a snake migration? Is the area just that special, that biodiverse, that you won't get the sheer number and variety of snakes here that you would anywhere else? Well, yes and no. There is another place similar to here. There's no road closure and it's not in the U.S., but if we broaden our borders a bit and head north, we can find another mass snake migration. Up in Manitoba, huge swarms of garter snakes spend the colder months of the year in the Narcissi snake dens. Just like in Illinois, they used to cross a road each year to head to this overwintering spot, a location that much like southern Illinois is ideal due to a very unique geology. The inner lake region here contains limestone bedrock. Once exposed to the elements, that bedrock began to crack and fissure. What remained were these large sinkholes. A snake couldn't ask for a better way to get below the frost line during a Canadian winter. Similarly to Shawnee National Forest, it probably took a little too long for us to do something about it. Illinois didn't do biannual closures for La Rue Road until 1972. The garters in Canada still don't see Highway 17 ever close. They did get underground tunnels in the year 2000 though. Until then, you can imagine what it looked like when this many snakes tried crossing over a highway twice a year. Part of the reason why we don't see more road closures, tunnels, or really anything for snake migrations could partially be due to bad PR. People just aren't always inclined to care about snakes. There's no shortage of road closures in North America for amphibian migrations, but that's a whole other video. Along with that human bias, there are environmental factors at play here too. I'm not claiming to have all the answers, but I do believe that the broader ecology of the area plays a large role as to why this is the only road closure in the U.S. due to snake migrations. It certainly is a factor in explaining the diversity and sheer volume of snakes that call Shawnee National Forest their home. I didn't even visit during migration season, and I still found snakes on the road. That being said, if you do choose to make the trip at some point, there are a few things you should be aware of. You can't collect the snakes, you can't touch them, and you need to stay on the road at all times. There are no hiking trails that come off of it, and you shouldn't be trying to chart your own. This is a very rare and delicate ecosystem. Shawnee National Forest is easily one of the most biodiverse places in the U.S. Let's keep it that way.